What do you think, girls? Clean up that coop. They're already checking out the hemp bedding there, it looks like. So, here's the bale. It's about a 30 pound bale. And uh, this should last me quite a while. What I'll do is get this all changed out and then uh, we'll go over some of the benefits of hemp and a little hemp history. So you can see that I had a uh, straw on top of this hemp bedding that was already in there. And what I did is, before we went on vacation, I put a layer of straw in there to give a little extra insulation. And uh, I cleaned out a lot of the hemp, which I probably didn't need to do because this stuff will last uh, six months. Some people use it for over a year, depending on how you're managing your coop. The method I use, might not be conventional for everyone, but I put a couple inches of the hemp here, and then every morning I come with the tongs, pull out the poo, and put it in a bucket. The other thing that I do in the morning is uh, I'll pull up any loose feathers with the tongs as I'm pulling up poop and putting them in the bucket, and I throw the feathers in the bucket also, and that all goes up to the compost when the bucket's full. But keeping this uh, coop free of loose feathers uh, I believe keeps down the uh, mite problem because I have heard that mites are attracted to a uh, coop with a bunch of feathers laying all over the place and a dirty coop. So diatomaceous earth and a clean environment and uh, happy chickens. I picked up this handy little uh, little powder sprayer to uh, put the diatomaceous earth in the coop and one thing to be aware of when you're using diatomaceous earth you want it to be food grade food grade safe for the birds and this stuff can be irritating to your nose and uh, probably not good to breathe so I'm gonna grab a mask and then I'm gonna shellac this coop note to self get some masks I'm gonna go with the t-shirt for now Okay, so the dust has settled and I've kind of swept off the walls or anywhere where I hit it thick and uh, I'll leave all of this diatomaceous earth on the floor here and just put the uh, hemp bedding right on top of this. I'm going to put this t-shirt back over my head because when I put this uh, hemp bedding in there it's probably going to stir up some of that diatomaceous earth. Alright, so the nest boxes are good to go, nice and clean. Okay, so I've got it spread in there, about two inches thick. And this stuff is nice and soft, it's pretty dust free, that's what I really like about it, the pine shavings I used to get just, just hit with dust whenever I'd open the door, and this stuff, pretty nice, and it's super absorbent. Uh, it absorbs the smell really well, so it never really stinks in here at all. Of course, I do clean it out regularly. I might try a board under here, a poop board. I did that at one time, but it almost was more hassle than just using the tongs. Of course, I am gonna be taking some and sprinkling it in here and just topping it off every once in a while, but this should last me over a year. So, the savings there. I mean, I pay 30 bucks for a bag of this, for a bale, and uh, if it's lasting me over a year, then I think it's gonna be more cost effective than wood chips or straw. Of course, you know, you can use free stuff, come up with things yourself, and that's great, but I just wanted to use this because it's dust-free, 
it lasts so long for the method that I'm using. So uh, there you go. Girls, you want to check it out? Come here, girls. Come on. Come on, there you go, Mod. Check it out. See? Look at there. Nice. The other thing about hemp is uh, <laughs> I was just going to say they don't eat it like they do pine shavings, but eh. hmm. I mean, they're curious pecking around that. Eh. Really? I just fed you guys like a ton of different things here. You don't need to eat that. Well, yeah, there goes my, they don't eat that theory, but they didn't before. So maybe they're just curious and going for it. We'll see. I think they're happy with the new bedding though. All right, I just sifted some uh, wood ash from the wood stove into this bucket. Now I'm gonna get some dirt in there and some diatomaceous earth and clean up their little dust bath there. Got a little bit more in there. I think that takes care of that and uh i think tomorrow before i let them out tomorrow morning i'll uh put some diatomaceous earth around in this straw just to make sure we're taking care of any issues in here also all right it's the next morning and i'm back inside the cabin um just want to talk briefly about the benefits of hemp and a brief history of hemp hemp is extremely absorbent as it can hold four times its own weight and lasts much longer than pine or straw bedding. Hemp bedding is very low in producing dust, which is great for respiratory issues in chickens, horses, any animal really. It also reduces odor better than straw or wood shavings. Hemp bedding lasts a lot longer than other bedding, thus creating less waste. Despite what you might think, hemp is actually really soft and makes a great bedding for animals or chickens. Hemp is used to make a variety of commercial and industrial products including rope, textiles, clothing, shoes, food, paper, bioplastics, insulation, biofuel, and bedding for farm animals. Hemp was also commonly used to make sail canvas. The word canvas is derived from the word cannabis. In 1937, the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 was passed in the United States levying a tax on anyone who dealt commercially in cannabis, hemp, or marijuana. The passing of the act to destroy the U.S. hemp industry has been disputed to involve businessmen Andrew Mellon, Randolph Hearst, and the DuPont family. One claim is that Hearst believed that his extensive timber holdings were threatened by hemp becoming a cheap substitute for paper pulp used for newspaper. Another claim is that Mellon, Secretary of the Treasury and the wealthiest man in America at the time, had invested heavily in DuPont's new synthetic fiber, nylon, and believed that the replacement of the traditional resource hemp was integral to the new product's success. These claims have been disputed by the parties involved, but given the history of business and greed in America, I tend to believe these claims. Hemp was used extensively by the United States during World War II to make uniforms, canvas, and rope. Much of the hemp used was cultivated in Kentucky and the Midwest. During World War II, the U.S. produced a short 1942 film, Hemp for Victory, promoting hemp as a necessary crop to win the war. Hemp was made illegal to grow without a permit in the U.S. under the Controlled Substances Act passed in 1970 because of its relation to marijuana, and any imported hemp products must meet a zero tolerance level. In 2018, Congress passed the Farm Bill, which officially reclassifies hemp for commercial uses. Already, 40 states have established hemp cultivation pilot programs for industrial and commercial purposes, although the plant has been strictly regulated. Whoo! That was maybe more than you wanted to know. Um, if you're still here, then great. You Maybe you found that interesting. Um, so I just wanted to put out some of the 
history of hemp, what I found on the internet. It was kind of interesting to me, so I thought I'd share it. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you on the next video. What the? Girls, no! I told you, it's him, not me.